we were part of an effort uh, to look at rivers and to understand the chemistry of rivers themselves and specifically the carbon chemistry and how it relates to uh, national carbon budgets and global carbon cycle numbers. Um, so what we did uh, is we basically used a, giant, a very large data set uh, of the chemistry themselves, of the rivers, through time across all of the U.S. to calculate the amount of carbon which that might come out of these river systems and into the atmosphere as a source of CO2. You know, we're always trying to refine uh, what the natural cycle may be or may have been at one point in terms of understanding uh, sort of human's impact on the carbon cycle. And uh, one of the aspects of understanding the natural carbon cycle is being able to par uh, partition um, the gross movement of carbon from the atmosphere into the terrestrial system, into aquatic systems, and balance that with what is actually coming out as respiration from the soils, from the water, etc. cetera. Um, and, you know, traditionally we do a pretty good job, although there's huge errors associated with that. Um, but our particular work uh, can start to, or it starts to suggest that something like lakes and rivers, which have not been included as a source of CO2 at all in these gross estimates, uh, needs to be considered. The headwaters, the sort of the upper reaches of a river, get a lot of their carbon in the river, both from the land surface as well as through the water moving through the soils. And that is really high CO2 dissolved in the water. And so when that reaches a system like a stream that is open to the atmosphere, just the natural laws of chemistry allow the carbon in that water system to move out into the atmosphere. Uh, the larger mouths of the river like that, or the larger stretches like the Mississippi, uh, they have a lot of stuff going on in the ecosystem of the river itself. You have algal growth, you have photosynthetic uptake within the river, and then you have other organisms eating that material and respiring that as CO2 and increasing the concentration in the water. And so that is a totally separate mechanism than what's going on in these headwater systems. And so piecing that apart along a drainage network uh, is really a, the next big effort.